What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Get used to hearing that. Oh, yeah. The engaged part. Mm-hmm. Still got another almost year. Some people have been asking, and like, no, yeah, we moved it. It sucks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> next we're going to be engaged for a bit. Hopefully, yeah. it's next June. I mean... There's always the movie Five Year Engagement, and that set like the upper limit. So as long as we're not close to that, we're good. That's so, oh no. You know, that was a long. That's a long. That's a long boy. Yeah. All right. So last week we did the much requested Tremors. Yeah, it's a great movie. So this week we're doing a movie absolutely no one requested, and if you did, I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> But we're going to be talking about Frogs, 1972. Man, no requests, unknown movie from 1972. This is going to get all the hits. This is going to do numbers for (laughs) sure. Look, I gave you guys one last week. This one's for me. Like one for you, one for me. I do that too. I get to pick. So we're doing Frogs. Hell yeah. Because, like, I don't know where I first heard of this, but it's always been, like, on my periphery and it's been one that's on my list of just weird movies that I want to eventually watch. Mm-hmm. So I finally just decided, well, this is the way to <laughs> carve out some time to watch it together. I got to say, man, watching this movie, I would love to do a kill count on this because yeah. a lot of people die, mm-hmm. different bunch of ways, and then all the in-between shit is them just walking around that I can just cut out. This would be a this cool 15-minute kill count. This is very light on plot. <laughs> yeah. There, there's barely a plot. Um, the plot is rich people. Yeah, it's kind of eco horror, which is becoming more of a thing in the seventies. The seventies is such a big decade for environmental activism. Yeah, because when is EPA nineteen seventy? Oh, that's nineteen seventy. Yeah, same yep. with like the first Earth Days, nineteen seventy. Yeah, and yeah. This is coming after because in the sixties is the Rachel Carson book, Silent mm-hmm. Spring. Yep. Um. And we even talked about this a little bit on our Native American representation episode where you even have like commercials like The Crying Indian is like around the same time. So it's like we're all very um, environmentally conscious more so in the 70s. And so that's when you start to get, yeah, this like nature taking revenge movies. Yes, this is is nature's revenge. This is less like radiation and like man Mm -hmm. creating. This isn't toxic. This is just straight up animals are sick of our shit. Although uh, pesticides do have to do with it. Uh, oh yeah that's true but it's not like yeah it's not like factory byproduct waste kind yeah, of thing no, this, not mutant animals it's just half of this movie is just footage of critters it is, and yeah. i love it it's a lot of just cut to insert shot of a monitor lizard some of them aren't even lit to match the scene that it's being cut into. No, this, you can tell it's clearly. This is like, a low budget movie from the early 70s, which is my favorite <laughs> shit of all time. I I love 70s movies. Yeah. Yeah, we've been having a good time because we just did a commentary track on The Car, the car which yeah. is 1977. It is like my new favorite movie. <laughs> this is, yeah. If I'm you're not a patron, kind of obsessed with The Car. Check that out. Yeah. So I'm glad we've been just hanging out in the 70s this week because it is, it is truly my favorite. It. Yeah, young Sam Elliott. Yes, 28 <laughs> years 28 old. With that really deep voice still. Yes, sir. Will you have my birthday eve? Congratulations. I'm sure it'll be a great day for everyone. It's, yeah, it sounds like Sam Elliott more than it looks like. It him. doesn't, it, it didn't register to me once during this that it was Sam. I mean, I knew it was before we started watching it, but my brain just couldn't. Yeah, it was not reconciled that that exactly. was Sam Elliott because he looks the same so guy young me. I even at one point held up, I held yeah. up my pen like okay I can kind of see the mustache yeah if you're unfamiliar with Sam Elliott I don't know he's that guy with the mustache uh yeah. <laughs> uh what do you what do you what's your association with him um I mean he was in a lot of older like kind of westerns and stuff I think he has a bit part in Butch Cassidy yeah uh, I'm just I'm reading and his Wikipedia think, he's got Tombstone I think after he had this career as kind of like a younger like a 70s hunk a la 
maybe a le- less famous than James Brolin. Oh, definitely. I think. Yeah. Um, I think he became more famous when he started being cast in like character roles. So mm-hmm. I know he's in Justified and. The dude abides. I don't know about you, but I take comfort in that. Oh, and thank you for smoking. That's right. He's a he's a former Marlboro Marlboro man. I can't say that word. Oh, Marlboro man. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, lots of us. So this this movie, the director, primarily a TV director, is a Canadian mm-hmm. uh, filmmaker and TV director. I saw what uh, uh, Charlie's Angels. I mean, I feel like name a '70s TV show, and at least one person in this movie was involved with it. I mean, I was going through these actors' IMDb's, and it's like, I a mean, love, love boat, have. mash, Dallas. A lot of them don't have pages though. Mm-hmm. This, uh, yeah, I, I don't know anyone else from the cast except for uh, I don't know her, but the woman who plays the uh, the maid Mabelin, mm-hmm. she EP'd a documentary about Angela the... Davis in the seventies. Yeah, so that's I, fucking I wrote down cool. The title, the it's the nineteen seventy two documentary about Angela Davis portrait of it's Angela Davis portrait of a revolutionary. She and also was a blues singer. May Mercer is the actress who plays yes, Mabel. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's great. This movie is surprisingly um, kind of woke. It is a little <laughs> bit. It takes place on a plantation. Yeah, in the 70s. In the, yeah, and it's this old, rich white. It does feel very TV family. Like, I, I thought of Dallas not even knowing that a lot of the people on this did some of turns course. in Dallas. It sure. makes, you know, that kind of, like, smear Vaseline on the camera, like, gauzy 70s family drama is exactly what this is. We're playing croquet on the lawn. And, yeah, the family is, uh, I think they film this in Florida, but, yeah, it's just, you know, very Southern. And they have uh, a staff of help. Yeah, two black people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charles. Charles, who is incredibly sick of everyone's shit. <laughs> and Maybell, who does a better job of at least pretending <laughs> to care about <laughs> the people of this family. But then one of the sons has a black supermodel girlfriend. Yes, named Bella. Yeah, and she's dope. She is great. And you you might expect her to be the first one to be killed in, a, I was real in worried. an old horror movie. They almost kind of tease, you know, because I think there's a scene, I forget who discussed, or no, maybe I'm thinking of Maybell. I was worried she would be the first to be killed because she finds a, a snake um, oh, yeah, a chandelier. The chandelier yeah. And I'm like, oh man, we're going to kill the, the Which is neighbors. like a uh, horror noir touched upon how that's not exactly an accurate trope. That's yeah. a, a thing that I think gets referenced more than it actually than it happens. happens, sure. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it is always uh, funny when it happens, and then you're like, "Oh, there's yeah. the, the stereotype." It happens enough for it to have been made into a a stereotype or a trope. But yeah, Bella is a really interesting character. Yeah, she's a girlfriend who is because it's the Fourth of July, so they're having this big family thing, um, and one of the sons of this rich family brings her over, and I am shocked that her race isn't mentioned. It's hinted it's at. It's hinted at. It's hinted at. Because he's like, nobody ever invites guests for the July. And I bring you, a girl, <laughs> worse, sexy model. And then there are some times when the grandpa's like, I don't want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. And he'll put a little emphasis on you. So just to really <laughs> paint the picture here, the patriarch of this family is this Southern tycoon grandpa. I hate that his name's Jason. I can't take a Jason, patriarch seriously. Jason, isn't Jason Crockett, right? Yeah. You know, the Crockett family. We have the Crockett's and then they are all, there's also the Martindales, which is part of the family, but mm-hmm. uh, I think they married one of the Crockett daughters married a Martindale. That makes so sense. So that branch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Grandpa, by the way, played by Ray Milland, who, if you know him at all, he's in The Lost Weekend, which is a Billy Wilder movie. That's a 1945 movie, so he's young in that. Okay. But I feel like I feel like if you know him at all, it's as a younger man and for that movie. Well, he's also in M for Murder. Yes, he is. He is in Dial M for Murder and Love Story, which, because uh, that would have, yeah, it says 1970. Love Story, I feel like when that came out, my imp- I've never seen it, but my impression of it is it was a very you know how like everyone made fun of Twilight when it came out, almost like a similar kind of thing where it's like all oh, this movie for chicks, but it was huge. Okay. Yeah, I could be off base there, uh, but yeah. So he's he's the uh, he's the grandpa, and man, every time this dude opened his mouth, I was white knuckling it. I'm like, oh man, I'm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm real nervous. For anyone who has seen Evil Bong, that classic of cinema that I covered, his voice is very much like the grandpa in that movie, which I just kept thinking of. And I know, honey, you didn't uh, watch Evil Bong with no, me. No, I've seen, I mean, I was in high school, but. Ho, oh, oh. ho. I only hope that one day convicts will feast upon your scrotum sack. Well, also, uh, uh, Bella, who is the the girlfriend brought in, is probably the most, like, pointedly intelligent character there and is there to, like, call everyone else out. It's It's so weird. It's funny that this movie kind of explores that idea. And, like, I think it's from... Raw, the Eddie Murphy bit where he talks about how, like, you never see black families in horror movies because as soon as something <laughs> scary happens, they would just leave. In the Amityville Horror, the ghost told them to get out the house. White people stayed in there. Now, that's a hint and a half for your ass. <laughs> a ghost say, get the fuck out. I would just tip the fuck out the door. But this movie actually kind of does that. <laughs> yeah, they literally, they are, literally like... are like, we're fucking leaving. You all can deal with your crazy frog problem, but we're taking the boat. Yeah, their fates the are a little out. ambiguous in the yeah, end. Yeah, I do wish they... If I did a kill count, I wouldn't count them. I don't know. Optimi- you see their clothes on the ground. Yeah, you see their clothes on the ground. I don't think they get away. I think they're killed by birds, it's implied. Yeah, here's a, here's a fun little note about frogs. Uh, <laughs> frogs don't kill anyone. Literally. They do at the end. Oh, who? Uh, the grandpa. Oh, is that frogs on him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Frogs kill one person yeah. out of like a dozen who die. All these other people are getting killed by all sorts of other animals. You got rattlesnakes are in there. There are lizards, lizards knocking down jars of poison. Tarantulas going into guys' mouths. Um, what uh, else? An, the Wikipedia, alligator. an alligator, <laughs> which we'll talk about. The Wikipedia hinted towards a butterfly attack, and no, that didn't we see, happen. We cut, it's like like Eisenstein montage. We see the butterfly, and yeah. then we see... But the butterfly's not doing anything. No, it's just, I wanted a butterfly attack. I kind of wanted a happen. butterfly death, Lots too. of snakes, snakes, snakes in the water. Yeah. Uh, not, not a lot of frogs. There are close-ups mm-hmm. of frogs. There is a persistent there sound frogs of frogs everywhere. in the background. It uh, almost is like they're mind-controlling. Oh, they're hypnotoads? They are they're hypnotoads, <laughs> yeah. Well, they, that, that's the thing also. They might be toads. I... I feel like it may. I could be wrong, but I, I'm not an animal expert by any means. I'm going to mislabel every single animal in this. <laughs> I think all the frogs in this are toads, yeah, because <laughs> aren't frogs? They're smooth, right? I thought and so. And smaller. I thought so. I think these are some big. These are fucking some big animals. fat little frogs. At the like, end, the cute. one that the kid holds up oh, in the car. So cute! I yeah. love them. So, yeah, the movie, uh, it, it starts with Sam Elliott in a canoe taking pictures of trash in a water. So, it's, like, very on the surface uh, oh, eco Oh, this, this isn't a movie about environmentalism. Yes, it's not it's hiding very much it in metaphor. Movie. It, it is, like, about the overuse of pesticides and stuff. And pesticides yeah. and conquering nature. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Jason has a line of, I still believe man is master of the world. So, yeah, it's very on the surface, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's this very obvious contrast set up with Sam Elliott in his canoe, his eco-friendly canoe, <laughs> yeah. taking pictures of all this trash because he's documenting it for his magazine. I think he's, he works for like a I think environmentalist yeah. magazine or something. He's like an, envi- an eco-photographer. Yeah. And then we, right after this opening scene, we cut to Clint who is, I think he's the one who, I think he married into the family. If I, no, 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 no. Clint's uh, Jason's son because he, Clint's married Jenny and Jenny feels as though the family has not Oh, that's her. right. Yeah, because she's yes. she's always whining about like your father. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we right. have, we have. Yeah, Clint and his, his boat. His I'm going to try to boat. break down this family tree. Okay, it's, okay. A, it's a lot. Let's see if I can do it. Jason mm-hmm. is the patriarch of the family. His grandpa. Yes, grandpa. He's in a wheelchair. Uh, that happened 15 years ago. Every year since, they gather on his birthday, the 4th of July, to celebrate him and three other birthdays in the month of July. Mm-hmm. I remember this. Uh, we don't have his wife. No. We don't have... So the, his kid, I believe his kid... Iris. Is Iris. Yes. The butterfly hunter. The weird aunt. The, the weird aunt, aunt. Who, who complains about the environmental regulations that the gov- uh, government forces their businesses to have. Daddy, did you know the government is forcing us to put strainers on our paper mills? So Iris is married to 
what's I oh, I want to call him Nestor because he looks like it's a not Nestor. Nestor. We were joking that it, yeah. his name Stuart. should be Nestor. Yeah, she is married to Stuart, who is a Martindale. Okay, yeah. Stuart has two children. Mm-hmm. He has Michael Martindale, who kind of looks like Wes Anderson and is kind of like the foppish one. Uh, he's the one. He's the one who brings uh, Bella. No, no, that oh. would be no. I got this. I love family trees. Okay, uh, girl with the dragon tattoo all over that. That would be Kenneth. Kenneth Martindale. is the one who brings. Okay, Kenneth is so over this shit. Kenneth I is so Kenneth. done with his family. I do want to like now that we're kind of back on Kenneth and and Bella. I also wanted to note that even just the fact that they are an interracial couple in this movie, 1972. That's that's pretty, pretty early cutting that's, it because. I'm thinking um, 1971, the year before this, is uh, The Omega Man, which um, Charlton Heston and Rosalind Cash are one of the first interracial kisses on film. And that was a huge deal. That has its own section in that movie's Wikipedia because it was such a big deal. I don't know if we see Bella and... I didn't note it. Is it Michael or Kenneth? Kenneth. Kenneth. I don't know if we see them kiss or not, but it's still like, you know, at this time, it's still pretty... You know, yeah, it was so funny though because uh, you know, they're just throwing all these characters at us. We were like, How many more are there? And at one point, she walks through, uh, one of the characters introduces Sam Elliott to everyone, and they get to Bella, and we were like, Is she going through her own get out? Like, is that yeah, like, like the get out, part? get out, Bella? No, <laughs> she's just in this family of rich white people. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's a horror this movie. Weird, yeah, this other movie happening within this movie for sure. But okay, so that's yeah, Kenneth is with Bella, yeah. Michael is the foppish one who, um, Clint fights on the log and then uh, uh beats him with yes, the pillow okay. and then he runs away and he's like the boy's a loser yeah because oh, then man. Stuart tries to get his other son kenneth to fight clint so that's that's the martindales is Stuart and iris and their sons uh michael and kenneth it's a very um knives out kind of family yeah, yeah. which, uh, which I mean that's I every love. you know yeah it's kind of one of my favorite genres of things is like rich family that all hates each other and every single member of the family has their own weird ex- like eccentricities yes. and stuff because That's they're just like, so bored and su- like Succession I love. And- succession, uh, Royal Tenenbaums is not quite the same thing, but, but it's another it's, big yeah. family, big family tree and yeah. I just, oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, and then we don't have Clint's parents, the, the, the Crockett side of this. Uh, mm-hmm. I would assume Iris's sibling would be their parent, mm-hmm. but it's Clint who is very drunk all the time. Dude, Clint is driving that speedboat hammered. He's wearing a jacket with a turtleneck because it's the seventies, and he's <laughs> drinking Schlitz or whatever, and yeah. it's just cruising he has this whole glasses movie. Glasses full of clear liquor, just clear liquor. Is just like, is he drinking. drinking a glass of? Wa- oh no, that's vodka. <laughs> no. <laughs> He like, oh, good, hydrating. you probably need some water. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and then Clint is married to Jenny. Yes, Jenny. And- by the way, I just, the actress is Lynn, Bor- is it, Bo- I can't read my own handwriting, Lynn Borden, I believe. Yes, Lynn Borden, who Detroit's own, by the way. Oh, one, great. To, um, apparently after this movie, because at the premiere, fans gave her, like, frog figurines this is on Wikipedia. And she, after this movie, just started collecting frog stuff and has, <laughs> like, a giant collection of frog figures. Oh, that's great. And I love it. Oh, cool. We love to see it. They have two young children, uh, Jay and Tina. Mm-hmm. And then Clint also has a sister, Karen, who becomes... Uh, Sam, she, I mean, she's into Sam Elliott the second they oh pick him up God. on that boat. She's in her like weird one piece, uh, weird like swim. It's very vintage, suit. um, swimsuit. Like I wouldn't call that a swim. That is a bathing suit to me. That is like a oh, bathing sure. beauty like, suit I am to me. Th- yes. Yeah, it's for weird. sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's Karen who last one I I mentioned, but she's the main character alongside Sam Elliott. Something like. It's always in, in, in rich people movies and I, mean, I think it's also just the kind of 70s vibes of it where I thought her, I thought her and Clint were a thing in the when they were driving around the boat. I thought that her and Clint were no, an they're item siblings. and then they were like, this is my brother. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so drunk ass Clint is driving a speedboat around and he topples over. We almost he get almost a sleepaway sleep camp. camps him. Yeah. yeah. Uh he topples over uh Sam Elliott and Good his thing those canoe. two kids weren't in 
Right? Speedboat. There we could go. have had a sleepaway camp on our hands. Yeah. But yeah, he definitely fucks up his camera and his film and stuff. But it was so weird because when he toppled him, when he topped him over, and then he like goes back around, helps him into the boat. Sam Elliott pulls him in. I thought I thought they, they knew, knew each, each other. other. The he was dialogue like, I was just is... playing a trick on you. Yeah, drunk ass Clint. Like I saw you in your boat. I just want to fuck with you a little bit. And by the way, my name is Clint. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, who are <laughs> like, you? The dialogue was very weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they take Sam Elliott back to their plantation home. Yeah, where they're getting ready to celebrate. It's the just the most birthday. fucking plantation ass build. I mean, it uh, is it like it is a plantation. It, <laughs> Like the white columns, and it's the Fourth of July too, so we're putting up the red, white, and blue bunting. Oh all my over god! This There's fucking a fucking thing. American flag cake and a record player playing just some like it sounds like just Sousa's John ba- Phillips. Yeah, Sousa Sousa's all greatest day. hits or Dude, something. Grandpa just sits there all day listening to like Sousa's greatest hits, and it's really sad. And then the kids are in the background marching. They're, yes, like, practicing Grandpa their makes march, them march around, and then they stop and turn around and keep marching. It's a it's weird great. family, guys. Yeah, it's a weird fucking family. The fucking by the way, the fucking John Phillips. I I forget if I told this story in the podcast or not. When I was in college, I took a a, a drawing class and part of it was nude drawing so we would have nude models come in and you know we would draw them. draw nude john philip Sousa? no we didn't <laughs> Res- <laughs> yeah we dug, might, dug him up and that might be treasonous i'm not even yeah sure. no that might be a felony actually <laughs> um but no so we had a a substitute uh one day in that class like a substitute professor and he just was like all right i'm just gonna you know put on music what i write some cds i'm gonna go out and like do shit like you're adults you can draw this naked person and have fun so this is in high school no college oh okay um so we're all sitting there drawing this naked woman and it's quiet <laughs> we're all just kind of in our zone um and the cd player is playing classical music but one of the songs on this this classic <laughs> hits cd is stars and stripes forever so we're all just sitting here drawing this naked lady to like da, 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 da. and no i could tell like it was just dead quiet and I, I no one wanted to laugh but i could tell everyone was like who's gonna get up and change it because this sucks and no one did we played through that whole fucking song and just sat there drawing her i felt like it was just the weirdest like it was like one of the most uncomfortable moments counterpoint that may have been the most most majestic moment of her life. Was, yeah, it was very <laughs> patriotic for sure. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I forget if I told you that story. No, I've heard that, and <laughs> I never get sick of hearing it. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. So they invite Sam Elliott. Who, what's his character's name? I'm just gonna keep calling he, him Pickett. Sam Elliott. Pickett. Oh yeah, it is Pickett Smith. Yeah. He is, also it, that also you could tell me that's the dad's name, and I'd be like, mm-hmm. Yeah, Pickett Smith. For Pickett sure. Smith. Also, of course, Sam Elliott's playing some dude named Pickett Smith. Like, I bet this character was originally written to be like, uh, a Raymond Brown. And then they cast Sam Elliott and they're like, oh, we have to name him something more, <laughs> <laughs> a little more Western. Yeah, Clint's inviting him to play. Oh, do you play badminton? Oh, what about tennis? What about ping pong? Oh my Those God. are all the same games. Those just are the same. Different just, size yeah, paddles. Different size, yeah. Different size uh, <laughs> equipment. It's just white people's sports. And they all play croquet on the lawn. Just croquet. doing all the, the upper upper class white people's sports. I feel like you, if you get into like blue collar Yeah, I don't white know where sports, you're from because my family's never playing any of this shit. No. Up. I mean, my family's Italian, so we got out the bocce balls in the backyard. We had a croquet set too. Croquet's all right. I guess, <laughs> but I feel like you get into like, if it's a family holiday and you're a bit more blue collar, you're playing like football on the lawn or maybe uh you're doing a uh, hockey. Uh, fuck the beanbag. Oh, cornhole. Cornhole. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or if you're my dad's family in Ohio, chicken shit bingo. Yeah, that's weird. It's weird. It's the most redneck shit ever. If you don't know chicken, this is my family is the opposite of the family in this. <laughs> chicken shit bingo is where you have a bingo like a uh, square thing. You have a chicken in a cage and it's like suspended over this board. And when the chicken shits, that's like the number that gets called out and you all have your bingo cards. There's places in Texas. I think there's a place in Austin that does it specifically. It's like a thing. We should go next year for RTX. We should. Yeah. We should. Okay, so he gets introduced to all of the family. He talks to to uh Clint, our drunk boat driver Clint a little bit who used to be a 
footballer oh. in high school. And that's why Jenny. He peaked. <laughs> yeah. He peaked. <laughs> but he says that they have all the trophies and stuff there because his wife wants them there because that's when she fell in love with him because she was a cheerleader. But then he fucking is like, well, I'm the same weight that I was in high school, not a pound over. And like, I still got it. But Jenny, she has a few extra bags under her eyes. Like, what are, dude, Jenny's hot. <laughs> dude, what Jenny's the fuck hot. are you talking about? One and two. Dude, Jenny wants those because she regrets marrying you so much. And just those trophies are the one thing where she's like, maybe this was, you know, like, let me remember the days where I. Yeah, Jenny is not having a good life. Oh, she is so unhappy. Everyone in this is unhappy. Uh, You know what? Kenneth's kind of above it all. He's okay. He's He's got Bella. Bella. He's good. And the he's kids, having a fun time sticking it to Grandpa. I don't think Iris is unhappy. She's just kind of oblivious. As yeah. long as she's not getting taxed too much. Yeah, Iris is the eccentric aunt. She's in her own little universe. Yeah, she's chasing butterflies. Karen's with just her neck. really horny. Karen Karen wants Sam Elliott. But like, I mean, who wouldn't? Look no, at him. For sure. He's seventies hot. We talked about this on our commentary track of the car. There is like seventies hot is a thing. Sam Elliott is extremely seventies hot. I think he's hot no matter when. Well, yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it's a type of leading man that we don't really, it's like, it's like fallen out of, of favor, I guess. Like now everyone's got to be huge and like ripped to play like any, any leading role ever. Even if it's not a superhero, I feel like you just got to get jacked for no reason. (laughs) But 70s hot dudes are like, you know, not as much muscle mass. They're hairy. They're hairy. Yeah. Yeah. She, fucking Lucy's, Lucy's going, going nuts. nuts. What you got? <laughs> uh, crumpled up post-it note that I gave her to play with. That'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, oh, yes, the frogs are a problem for this family already. They're mm-hmm. too loud. They're too, they're just never shutting up. Yeah, they they can't sleep the at night. Up. So uh, Jason actually sent uh, one of his guys, Grover. Grover, the unseen Grover. To go take care Grover? of these frogs with some pesticides, but he hasn't been back since six in the morning. Mm-hmm. So he asks Sam Elliott to go see what the hell happened to Grover. Sam Elliott finds him dead. Yeah, R.A.P. Grover. Yeah, Sorry, dead Grover. by snakes. So just if we're counting, not frogs. Yeah. Not dead via frogs. We're going to keep track. Yeah. Snakes got him. Yeah. Although the snakes disappear depending on the shot that you're looking at Grover's body. I just want to know who, because like, if you pay enough attention, we're reusing the same five Animals? or oh, yeah, so sure. of each animal. Like, there's specifically two. I think they're monitor lizards. I could be. Wrong. Oh yeah, those two. Those two are up to trouble. This whole <laughs> movie. It's the same two lizards in every. They're walking scene. into rooms. Yeah. They're flicking their tongues. They're like those those criminal cats and cats. You know, but lizards. Oh. Rumpel, Mungo yeah, Jerry and, and Rumple Teaser. Exactly. But, you know, lizards. They're lizards. And murder. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the makeup effects on Grover's soggy yes, ass face. Yes, me too. Because he's yeah. like face down in a puddle and uh, Sam Elliott turns him over and his face is all waterlogged like, and super his waterlogged. skin is all, it's like kind of, you know, coming off. It's, it's gross. It's gross. Yeah, it's done really well. Um it's weird when the, the parts of this movie that look great and other parts that look real weird. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of how this movie looks, I, I noticed that the cinematographer, Mario Tozzi, also did Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've just, I spent a lot of time with that guy. Mm-hmm. His uh, very thick accent. Mm-hmm. Very thick accent. Italian? He's super Italian. Yeah. He's great. He shot this movie. Oh, I like really? his stuff. This, this was 72, love... Carrie was 76? Mm-hmm. Okay, I His know that stuff, he had... It's so weird because the way I described this movie in terms of like, it's very Vaseline-y, gauzy, like we're almost fantastic. That's how Carrie feels too, especially For that sure. beginning is like fantasy land 70s, like... Yeah, I love it. I love his his vibe. I can't quite put a finger on it, but yeah, I forget what else he did, but he's done some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he worked with De Palma on something else too. Oh shit! I I I saw Carrie. We were like just about to film. I wrote down Carrie. Didn't yeah. Get oh, by the way, when Jason <laughs> sends out. Sam Elliott to look for Grover. He says he's been A W O L. A W O L. Yeah. Do people say that instead of just A W O L? I don't know. <laughs> Do we know how? This family made their money. Paper mill, right? Oh, is it? Okay. I thought maybe that Iris 
did her own thing and like happens to have a paper no, mill with her husband. Iris doesn't do anything. But that's the thing is if you're that rich and you want to just keep making money, you could be Iris and just yeah, like didn't... give money to people no. to make a paper mill. Jason Dev No, Jason had a paper mill. Okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Because it's weird. They say Jason says something like with all, all what with all of our technology and all of our money, we still can't get rid of these damn frogs. I'm like, what technology are we <laughs> talking about here? I don't know. Probably pesticide spraying technology. I don't know. It's 1972. Yeah. Yeah. So they're keeping the dead Grover thing a secret for now because Jason doesn't want to spoil his birthday. He really likes his birthday. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, but if you were this weird about your birthday, and at the, like... I don't know. Here's I, the thing, though. They leave that body out there. Like, he has Sam Elliott stay the night, and Sam Elliott the next day is like, we, we really got to go do something that, about dude. that body. Like, doesn't Grover have a family? Doesn't I'm Grover sure have a next does, of kin that needs know, to be Jason's notified? And Jason's like, no, it'll ruin my birthday. We tell no one. Like, God damn, you're such a baby. I, I don't know. I think, like, adults being, like super duper weird about their birthday like here how old is he turning here i uh, i think the actor's in his 60s i don't know what? like to the Birthdays point where you're a, a tyrant days. about it it's i'll weird. be a tyrant about it when i'm 60 i hope you're ready oh no yeah where's my cake Wait, i will i'll make sure uh what is i think like a lizard just crawls all over his american flag cake yeah which you no, know a what? frog is hopping through it oh it's a frog it is i a do frog. Because my birthday is the 5th of July, and so my birthday growing up was always fucking America theme, you that know, sucks. America. And I'm like, oh, I get it, dude. I've had the fucking, like, American flag cake before. Ugh. Yeah, while they're talking about what to do about Grover, <laughs> there are frogs trying to get in through the glass door, and it's adorable. They're, they're so like, cute. You and later, I think... Jason says Look, they were, there were frogs attacking the plantation and it's like they were just like they're just kind of scraping at the door like they want food or something and yeah they find a snake on the chandelier but Jason just takes out a little fucking handgun and shoots That's it down what he has under that blanket on his lap he's got the blanket like uh like FDR does not Annie did FDR just have the blanket FDR does not Annie what he's an Annie the president is in the musical Annie he is? Yeah. When? I don't know. I think the end. And the orphan girl? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in the musical. Not actually performing. No, no, no. Like, you, he's, but he's a, a character. character. I'm, I don't remember FDR being part of Annie, but you know what? I haven't seen Annie in a while, so I'm going to take your word on it. We don't have to look it up. It's I'm fine. looking it up. I know. Yeah, look. She goes to meet the president. All right. There you have it. He has a gun? No, I'm saying he has the blanket over his, you know. Oh, why is Annie your reference? I, think I don't know. Like I know he, way. but I was like, does he? Did he in real life, or was that just, or was that just part of the musical? No, I'm like a, <laughs> the way you phrased it made it sound like in Annie, FDR is there with a, with gun, a gun under his blanket his... and pulls it out no, for some reason. I'm just saying that if you're like if if you're a high school putting on Annie, your your costume of FDR is gonna be like the wheelchair and you've got the blanket over your you know, that's just like the FDR costume. I don't know if he always had the blanket in real life. I didn't want to be a dick and be like, Yeah, like he's got always got that blanket. But anyway, that's where uh, Jason <laughs> pulled that gun from. That's what I, the point I was making. We got there. Shoot that snake down, because yeah. he believes man is the master of the world. Yeah, dude. That's why the kids are giving firecrackers to just blow up in the fucking nature. Oh my yeah. God. yeah. These like seven year old kids are running around with firecrackers. I was afraid at first because they they show the kids lighting something on fire and I'm like, please don't be torturing animals. I don't want this to be like I don't know if low that was key, implied. Low key cannibal holocaust. <laughs> it may have been implied. But that they the, blew up like a frog because it was like cutting to close ups of animals and then a really long shot of them and it went back and forth and then they lit it and ran. So yeah. I don't know if that was implied, but I couldn't really tell with the editing. Yeah. Uh, Clint's drunk ass is hitting on Bella right in front of his oh, wife. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. He really, yeah, he's yeah. into it. He's teaching her to play croquet. Mm -hmm. It sucks. Her outfit is. She looks amazing. She's got like the very traditional, like the one shoulder. I wish I knew what it was fucking called. She has kind of the um, 
turban where it's like really fabric heavy on the one side yeah. it's almost like a decor like i don't fuck i don't know what they're actually called but she looks at, like compared to everyone else who is dressed in like various yellows and beiges <laughs> her outfit is yeah she really said she cool. designed it too that's or right she designed one of the other dresses and jenny yeah. can't jenny's like you look like shit pretty much <laughs> michael goes off to um i forget the task that Jason sent him on, but he's like driving that Jeep. He sends him to to go find Grover. Sure. I think. Okay. Uh yeah, we get some cool shots of them him like driving towards those monitor lizards and then like turning and they're like flicking their tongues in the front of the camera. It's a cool shot. But then he just decides to stop his car in the middle of the road and get out and take out a gun and shoot at some birds. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm going to be a man. Yeah. And so he's like shooting Gotta at birds. Prove his worth to grandpa and he like chases these birds into the forest when he's attacked by like i can't tell it's are trees attacking him he ends up with tarantulas all over and it's super fucking gross they are going in his mouth i don't know if they're real or not i think they're real i think they're just throwing tarantulas at this guy like but but one of them they throw and he like hits it and I'm like, you can't do that. I mean, I, I guess you can then. you could in then. the 70s. Sure. Yeah. This is, uh, Cannibal Holocaust was later than this, right? I they think so. They took a knife to a giant tarantula. Well, that also was. That was filmed elsewhere. The middle that of the was, jungle. Yeah, that <laughs> was a weird thing. Origin, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it's like moss from all these trees starts like lowering itself onto him. And then there's tarantulas. Yeah, one tarantula definitely gets thrown in his mouth. And then there's he, never any other he, supernatural type thing, but this has like ex, expedited growth, but I, plant growth. It's so weird. Yeah, it's bizarre. And the web kind of growing around him super fast. And maybe that's supposed to be the spiders. I don't think it's supposed to be supernatural. I think it's literally supposed to be the tarantulas doing all of it, but it's not, <laughs> you know, not pulled off great if we can't tell. No, it takes forever. His death goes on forever. And I'm so time. sick of Lots watching of tarantulas tarantula in the mouth. close ups. Yeah. Oh, fair God. Oh, fair yes. warning of all the clips. I'm, oh. I'm probably like, too late for a warning because we're about <laughs> yeah. to move on from this part. <laughs> sure, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. And by the way, he uh, gets attacked by all the tarantulas after he accidentally shoots himself in the leg. That's right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like running with his gun and then he shoots himself in the leg yeah. and falls. So uh, another death. Not frogs. Not done by frogs. Nope. Tarantulas. At all. In no way, shape, or form were frogs involved <laughs> in this murder. Then Iris. Oh, and what? there's a random scorpion. Oh, yeah. After he's died, yeah. a little tiny scorpion's put on his hand, which, like, a lot of these he's actors. He's, like, teabagging him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> came over and just crouched <laughs> up and down. Uh, I, Out of all the actors, <sighs> one guy wrestles a gator. I think I would least want to be Stuart because he wrestles a gator. But close yeah, second, <laughs> maybe not close, is Michael with all these all tarantulas. The tarantulas. I'm, I'm trying to think of, like... What are the other? Because, I mean, the next guy to go is Kenneth, who is in the greenhouse after Iris sends oh, him in there to get. But uh, that's that would be the easiest one, I think. Yeah, he ends up with lizards all over him. That's but like, fine. that's fine. I like lizards. Yeah, lizards. Put them on me. I whatever. don't mind lizards. I don't mind snakes as long as they're not venomous. Snakes, just, they creep me out a little bit, man. I guess if, you're just, if you just found one, it's creepy, but I like them. Uh, I don't know. They got a rattlesnake in here, and that's scary no matter who you are. And it, it bites Iris. It does that's bite our, her. I, think that's, I don't know if that's our next death. It's one of them. The, the, the rest of this is just a series of like very slow animal like di- animal very murders. long death yeah, scenes yeah I think that I think it might have been a defanged rattlesnake. It must it, have it, been. It, it you know bites her it reminded it me of like halloween three because in that movie when the the kid's head splits open and the snakes and shit come out there is also a scene of a snake biting like the dad but it's not a rattlesnake so they could have just gotten like a but even then i'm like how do they do that you I can't have that you, after getting... i think you deep bang them which i don't know if that's is that all right <laughs> i i don't think that's a very ethical Maybe they i don't found know a snake with a cavity yeah and so they needed to anyway <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Kenneth's death is maybe my favorite because he's in this greenhouse. And then for some reason, there are jars of poison, nondescript poison Just on poison. the upper shelf. cartoon where it's not the skull and crossbones. Yeah. And poison. fucking these lizards. They're so cute. And I think they're caimans. They're like little baby alligators. But there's also the modern there's lizards. All, and there's also maybe some geckos. Geckos, igua- not iguanas. I know what those guys look like. But like geckos, lizards. 
probably a few other guys. Yeah. I don't know the difference. I'm why sorry. Why can't I picture what the fucking iguana looks like? Iguana got the beard, right? Doesn't that guy oh, got the beard? Oh, yeah. 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 And the, the eyes, mm-hmm. right? Okay. No, that's a chameleon. I think chameleons Oh, have I'm the thinking of the chameleon then. Eyes. What's an iguana look like then? An iguana? No, I think you're right. I think the iguanas have kind of like a... A little like throat thing? Yeah. yeah? Like a waddle. <laughs> Not a waddle, but you know. <laughs> Like anyway, a chin. these reptiles. Oh yeah, they like they're like little. Uh, they got little, little hair, like little spiky oh, hairs. Oh yeah, they're stylish. I mean, it's not hair, but you know. Yeah, they are knocking the these fucking jars of poison over. It's so funny. They're just like, eh. I love the ones with their mouths open because it like just looks like laughing. Ah. They like they're cackling. It's great. Yeah. They knock over all this poison it fills the air with smoke and kenneth dies of asphyxiation yeah, but not, <laughs> before he dies he's like oh what's this and he goes like, to investigate and just sticks his face it, into dude. this i'm just imagining it being like ammonia and bleach he's just like what, what is that oh he could have just turned around and <laughs> he left could have just left and instead yeah he sticks his fucking head in the cloud Gotta go investigate and that gets him killed yeah uh, <laughs> I love that there's a shot too in that part of uh, one of the lizards um, coming into the greenhouse and the door shuts behind it. It's yeah. like it shuts the fucking door. It's so good. I love all the shots of these animals. Me it's too. like a low budget fucking planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> it's just these inserts of reptiles. Yeah, of some dude's reptile collection from Florida that they like rented all these animals from. I really want to know where these animals came from, especially the fucking alligator, because what the fuck? Yeah. I think Iris. Iris, yeah, I don't like her death. It takes It takes forever. so long. It's just, She's... it's her just running and being scraped up by trees. She gets leeches on her, she, which ooh, leeches are gross. fucking gross. She does the same scream over and yeah. over again, just like an... Ah! Although she falls hard face first into this pond. It's that, like, kind of puddle. funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when she gets the leeches on yeah. her. What ultimately does her in? Is it the I snake? I think the rattlesnake that bites her. Because then she turns blue. She turns blue in record Real time. Real fast, yeah. Real fast blue there. Yeah. Uh, Stuart is out looking for her because that's his wife. And he misses her body, but he finds a fucking gator or two. Yeah, I, I don't know how many there actually were. We, I immediately took to Google and Googled this guy's name, the actor's name, who he doesn't have a Wikipedia or anything, but I Googled his name and gator because this guy had to have been it, like some kind of expert like animal or show trainer. thing because he is literally wrestling this gator, and you can't just ask your actor. To sag or not, yeah, to fucking go it's wrestle insane. a gator. <laughs> like that, if this is like if if that was the case, that is something I would expect to hear happen on the set of Cannibal Holocaust, and not this. Where yeah. they were like, we they made an actor wrestle an alligator, and it, like, no, this is <laughs> it's insane. I don't even think its mouth is is bound or anything, you know, like taped shut. It just this dude's just rolling around in a pond with an alligator, and its tail is going. Like even the tail's dangerous. Did you see that video on Twitter of I think there was there was some I don't know I don't know the context. It's bunch, it's like three cops and they are trying to load an alligator and or crocodile into the bed of a truck and this alligator whips its tail and knocks out one of the cops cold. It just Ooh. like fucking knocks him out because they're just pure muscle. Yeah, dude. Like, I don't understand dude, how this scene if, happened. If you had told me a guy gets killed by an alligator in this movie, I would have expected shot of guy, shot of alligator. Never a shot with the two with of them the in the same them, shot. Yeah, or like bad, comp, like a mat comp of yeah. them in the same but shot. But no, this guy's like running from them and then wrestling them. It's so wild. And then gets killed by them. And um, this movie's so... um. <laughs> like kind of out of like it's so random there's nothing about it online i, I had a hard time finding anything about just the making of this or yeah i had never fucking I heard of it. Know. i don't know where you came up with this thing but <laughs> <laughs> you said it's on youtube it's all on youtube yeah if you want to watch it the whole thing's on youtube yeah I we hope, rented it on amazon i hope that the, me pointing that out doesn't get it taken down but i also don't know if anyone cares about <laughs> <laughs> the royalties from frogs so have at it uh, fucking Sam Elliott comes back into the movie at this point, and you're like, oh, yeah, he's in this, because mm-hmm. we've just been following these other waspy people get murdered by reptiles. 
But yeah. now he's back and everyone's telling Jason he sucks and that he needs to let his fucking birthday go. But he says, no, I want my double old fashioned. Yeah. Well, yeah, he says, no, he goes, uh, he dem- I demand the original menu that we were going to be served, starting with a double old fashioned for me. Like grandpa wants to get drunk. Damn like, it. Dude, I'll take he's the double not going to let the deaths but... of some of his friends close family ruin <laughs> his birthday but as we mentioned earlier bella is not putting up with this shit and neither is charles and neither is is it mabel mabel yeah mabel yeah none of them are having it and no. they're like sorry dude you can enjoy this we're out of here yeah so he has clint's d- fucking blackout drunk ass clint can barely stand up drive he's a weak. boat yes i'll drive you guys home he's propping himself up on oh, yeah, the fireplace the, mantle the plantation's on an island it's on an island the they the don't make it clear swamp. enough it's confusing but uh, i have to take a boat to get there exactly so, so clint drives them home yeah. or not home but uh, to, to the, the dock, dock. Where the the store owner Jesse's missing, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, then they th- there are birds, and it looks like the birds. It, d- the, it turns into the birds for a second, for a hot second, with our our black cast running away from the movie. Our trio of black cast members run away from the movie behind a building. Last time we see them, except for we see their luggage later, so yeah, presumably killed. It's like either leave They're it ambiguous everyone. or just show them all get murdered by birds but then i bet they were like oh shit it's gonna be too much like the birds maybe yeah but- oh yeah dude they're they're not they don't have ray berwick here to fucking <laughs> train their birds and send them they, they had comped it's shots comped birds, of birds yeah. and that's the best they could do the, these three actors made it out easily like you know least stress in oh this yeah they didn't because they didn't have to interact with any yeah. animals all their animal uh Killers got comped, which is great. Uh, what happens to Clint? Because he's in his boat. He never Clint, makes it yeah, back. He, I think he's so drunk that he didn't tie up the boat because he realized it's, it's floated away. So he swims back to the boat and then he gets grabbed by a, a water moccasin, a snake that like it just swims through the... That, those are, see? see, those are freaky. Yeah, that's freaky They're, as shit. Yeah, that's scary. Rattlesnakes are terrifying. Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, Lucy didn't like that either. Yeah, not into that. Because, like, uh, when I see that snake swimming, I'm like, imagine if someone pinned your arms down and then you had to swim. That would suck. How are they doing it? I was going to, just just seeing that swim, it lights up, like, a caveman part of my brain where I'm like, fucking run. Like, just that <laughs> motion of the water. Ugh, it's gross. Yeah. Um, all this time, Jenny is watching from the plantation with binoculars, so she sees Clint get <laughs> dragged under by this water moccasin. And she freaks out and and runs like to sw- swim. To, I don't know what her plan is, but she uh, runs into a snapping turtle. Yes, Ooh. dude, that snapping turtle looks weird. It's scary. It's snapping so turtles are scary. Looking. Big and its head is all weird. Yeah, I, I'm snapping turtles. I'm freaked out. But I'm more freaked out by them than like a snake. I'll give you that because I think snapping turtles can move faster than maybe you think they can. You think so? I don't know. Like I don't, they're they're freaky. I don't want to. I don't want to accidentally uh, say any more fake animal facts. <laughs> I which I apparently do a lot. I just I think bears weigh two thousand pounds, and I think helicopters could, or I think hippos can take down planes. I'm not gonna say that snapping turtles can like snapping run. Snapping turtles or can run at ninety miles <laughs> no. per hour. You heard it from Chelsea. <laughs> We're not doing that. That's not going to be my thing. <laughs> I refuse to let it be my thing. This is why we have to, next time we watch Planet Earth, it's got to be sober because this is what happens. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, the snapping turtle gets her, and when they find her body, there are crabs all over Yeah, we got it. crabs. Are there freshwater crabs in the I lake? Think there's freshwater crabs. Okay, I wasn't sure. Lucy I, is ripping apart my Oh, my dog. God, Lucy, Here, fuck off. Take Lucy's take a a part of the frogs yeah. animals. I know. We shouldn't have let her watch it. She's getting ideas. <laughs> yeah, about animal freedom. Yeah. Get out of here, Lucy. <laughs> uh, so at this point, Grandpa Jason, which I still can't get over. That's his, his fucking name. Jason, it's so yeah. stupid. He is staying in that plantation and celebrating his birthday, even if he has to do it alone. So Sam <laughs> Elliott is going to take Karen who just is so into him, and the two kids who are now orphaned. They don't know their parents are dead. Yeah, Clint and Jenny are dead now. They're gonna, the four of them so are gonna get I out think of it's there. Tina, who's like, why is there the boat? But daddy's not in it. And they're just like, 
don't, don't think about it. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we're going to do a race <laughs> to the car for your lives. <laughs> yeah. No, to the Fun. boat because they got to get out of there. Uh-huh. And what what happens while they're rowing that canoe? I know that uh, Sam Elliott gets the gun at one point. Does he shoot a snake? Do, he shoots an alligator. But oh, before yeah. that, um, first of all, he gets shirtless in this part. Apparently, him getting shirtless in this movie led to him getting offered movie roles. Like That's I think lifeguard. Said. He got offered lifeguard specifically because um, he was so hunky. <laughs> but no, before he shoots his alligator, fucking like right between the eyeballs, he. Uh, beats a couple snakes to death with the paddle oh, yep, yep, <laughs> of yep. the boat <laughs> just shirtless he's just hitting the water <laughs> really hard yeah then he shoots the alligator and these, they make it out to a road this for this new family i guess <laughs> yeah um they yeah they make it out to a road and they catch a ride with this woman and her son <laughs> yes who well no no here's here let me yeah, set it yeah, up please. properly because they get they flag down this car yeah and they're uh, sam elliott's like hey can we get a ride and the mom's like sure sam elliott's got a he's gun got a, he's got a giant like a rifle but whatever i guess it's, it's 70s, Florida. Dude. yeah so he he gets his new family in the back seat mm -hmm. and they're sitting there and the mom's like yeah i just picked up my son from camp and the son turns around hi i'm bobby hi i'm bobby hi i'm bobby <laughs> And he holds out, uh, he goes, look what I caught at camp. It's huge. You Have you ever seen one this big? And he holds out this fucking fat frog. It's a frog. huge fucking it's a bull big frog, boy. man. Yeah. And it, and don't then forget it, that the mom driving says, it's weird. There's like no one on the road. So everyone's been, been murdered. So and, how far does it go? And he holds out this frog and it fucking freeze, freeze frames frame. and like pushes in on the frog. I guess implying that they gonna die from that one frog. From the one frog. Whatever. Yeah. Cuts. So what is it? Just the world. Maybe, yeah. or maybe just Florida. Cue Bugs Bunny gif of him sawing it off. Yeah. <laughs> so is the movie done? Nope, no, not yet. We're back at the plantation. Yes. It's Jason. Just he's all still alone. drinking. He's yeah. He's getting real drunk. He's just <laughs> sitting alone, thinking about whatever he thinks about, which I'm <laughs> guessing is like a mixture of like random old baseball statistics <laughs> and eugenics. And he gets a a phone call, which it's weird because the phones weren't working earlier. He gets a phone call because the frogs apparently cut the phone lines. Oh, like, that's what he sent Michael out to do is to like oh, look to for fix, like the yeah. phone lines. So yeah. he picks up the phone. He's like, "Hello, what? Who? What is this? The phones weren't even working." So the the frogs like what or do crank. a prank? Yeah, they're fucking cranking. Crank their him. jerky <laughs> jerky voice. Yeah, so the frogs are just prank calling him and driving him insane. And then he has all these taxidermied animal yeah, heads. Yeah, he's also he like a hunter. Out. He's got a ton of guns. He's like a whole cabinet of guns. That's a whole other a whole element thing. to the, the man versus nature thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, all these taxidermy animals, and he's kind of looking at them, and they're all making noises and stuff. So he's just yeah. The fish one makes a noise, and I'm like, fish don't, don't make yeah, that it, noise. It, it, it's like a lion, rawr, and then a a boar, like rawr, like I don't know, whatever noise a boar makes. Yeah. Then this fish is just uh. uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then we see there's all kinds of froggies outside. They break the glass of the windows and they're all over the shelves. They're every, I mean, they pile on to Grandpa and Grandpa gets knocked out of his fucking wheelchair and R.I.P. Jason. Yep. The frogs finally got a kill. Yeah. The one in the frogs. The one, the only kill by frogs in the movie, frogs. Which, if it was going to happen to anyone, it's a good Gotta take out Jason to, to happen to yeah. So that's frogs. That's frogs. And again, it's on YouTube for free if you so, want to. So you know it. what? I had a good time watching <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. There I, are enough funny little bizarre weird moments oh, yeah. and line deliveries that makes it fun. One of my favorite that we didn't mention is when the kids they're like annoying grandpa because they're late to the the dinner or whatever they're doing that night. Mm -hmm. And they're like, one of them has a big frog and he's like, But look, I found this big frog. And the grandpa's like, yeah, but get the fuck out of here. But then at the last minute, he's like, uh, Jay, you were right. He was gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> After he's like, get that shit away from me. And the kid's dad is like, hey, hey, bud, let's go put this frog away. But yeah, you were right. It was gigantic. <laughs> like there's just these random lines that are fucking hilarious. Yeah, there's some good lines. You can fast lines. forward through the, the deaths because yes. they're just like people running around. So now that we got a little bit of 70s 
creature feature fix mm-hmm. in? Are we bouncing back to more modern stuff? I think so. I'm trying to keep it varied week to week. We'll probably mm-hmm. go back and forth just to keep it interesting. Uh, next week, I'll probably... Yeah, we'll go like 90s, 2000s. Lucy. Lucy's knocking stuff She knocked stuff over, over the reanimator cat. Oh, come on. The reanimated right, cat. We need to be done here yeah. and take care of our spoiled uh, this child. Is, this is coming out Tuesday if you're watching it the day of. Tomorrow on Wednesday, we are planning on doing a live stream play of us doing Sea of Thieves with Mike and Beth. Wait, that's news to you me. You missed that conversation? I did. Yeah, oh they said Wednesday we can play, and they said that they would be down to live stream it. Are you also down to yeah, live I'm stream down, it? Because now that we know what we're doing, I didn't want like I didn't want us to live stream it when we were still figuring out, because part of the fun was figuring out that game, and I wouldn't have wanted someone telling us what to do. But now we're that we're fucking seasoned pro pirates yeah you can watch us and we'll do it for a charity because that's always yes, fun definitely uh yeah so you'll see us mm-hmm. it's us uh, so much fun yeah i i miss it yeah we had to take a break because beth we has a, pro- a break <laughs> because i'm working on the the secret kill count that'll be out sunday and oh god that has to come out sunday and uh beth is also working on a project so we had to ease off the gas mm-hmm. after a week straight <laughs> of like five hours a day pirating yeah it was good we took a break <laughs> <laughs> yes, but Wednesday, yeah. uh, follow us on Twitter for more details. It'll be on the Twitch, twitch.tv slash deadmeatjames. Yes. Yeah, cool. cool. <laughs> well, until then, I'm, I, we're doing this backwards. I don't like it. I'm Do Chelsea. It. I'm James. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Bye. <laughs> That's usually what you do. <laughs> well, I hope you folks enjoyed yourselves. Get you later on down the track.